Today, we continue our conversation on thinking for yourself, not letting the noise of mental chatter drown out the inner voice of infinite intelligence within you. So I remember in 2010, I had this wonderful opportunity to teach these speed reading workshops on behalf of Iris Reading. I committed to them as part of my public speaking practice as I was doing my own sales and deals in my IT business at that time, and I saw it as a great opportunity to cultivate the skill while earning income from the deal and being in front of many business professionals who took the workshops, which also brought awareness to my IT business to facilitate more deals. So it was a win-win-win deal all around, benefit for me, others, and all. Now, when I look back at that point in my life, which was symbolic to one of my favorite sayings of how the cave we fear to enter can hold the treasure we seek, I see clearly how releasing identification to subconscious beliefs of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, which stifle our true nature, automatically reveals our inherent prosperity in life. Whatever prosperity means to you, which for me was through entrepreneurship. And We all have the opportunity to do it now, as James Allen mentioned in The Heavenly Life. Past and future are dreams. Now is a reality. All things are now. All power, all possibility, all action is now. And this is the truth. So knowing that all power is now, why would one appear to hold themselves back from revealing their inherent prosperity? Well, not intentionally. It is due to subconscious beliefs, and not all of them, as many can be helpful for now. Some of the ones worth no longer identifying with when it comes to prosperity are the ones that result in unnecessary fear, uncertainty, and doubt, which may be revealed in appearance of procrastination or drifting in general. Now, in relation to the James Allen quote, which is really about flowing ideally from your vision, I'd like to revisit the hero's journey. The popular Christopher Vogler variation inspired by Joseph Campbell, and I trust it shall contribute to you remaining flowing ideally from your vision. See, it's one thing to say, stop procrastinating, or just keep your attention on what is important, which many have heard many times, yet the same habits continue for them. And it's another thing to actually release identification to the subconscious beliefs that appear as procrastination or attention drifting through relating with the hero's journey. And by that I mean, we can see life experiences from this hero's journey perspective to remain inspired on the journey of actualizing self, while purifying the mind from those beliefs mentioned earlier, to allow your inherent prosperity to automatically manifest, as I and many have done with the hero's journey quite effectively. As a matter of fact, many books and movies that resulted in lives being transformed ideally in a fun, entertaining way use the format as part of facilitating transformation as it provides a relatable framework for the journey to realizing self, understanding the true nature of self, and actualizing self. It, in a storytelling way, brings awareness to beliefs identified with in mind, which may appear as one may call tests, obstacles, or enemies, which are actually reflections of beliefs in mind, presented as opportunities to release identification to the beliefs which correspond them, to allow the unseen power of your subconscious mind to take care of everything for you in an ideal way. So I see the hero's journey as the art of learning how to allow the unseen power to take care of everything for you in an ideal way. See, illusory beliefs in mind related to fear, uncertainty, and doubt towards actualizing a conscious vision unnecessarily cloud living from the heart and intuition, which is our true way of being. As Steve Jobs said in his commencement speech, follow your heart and intuition, everything else is secondary. If one lives unflinchingly from their heart and intuition, mind is purified from unnecessary fear, uncertainty, and doubt-based beliefs, by which, as a result, they realize self, understand the true nature of self, and actualize self as mentioned earlier revealing their inherent prosperity. So the journey begins in what is referred to as the ordinary world. This is where one is perhaps going about their day-to-day life like a backdrop character in their own movie, unaware that they are a star. 
in a way we could say disenchanted by being unaware of the true nature of their existence. At this stage, one may not be thinking ideally for themselves. They may be instead looking towards the patterns of the world which is the past to tell them what to think or not think, as Napoleon Hill mentioned in Outwitting the Devil, drifting. He said, I can best define the word drift by saying that people who think for themselves never drift, while those who do little or no thinking for themselves are drifters. Then at some point what emerges is the call to adventure. A desire from the heart emerges, as Neville Goddard mentioned in The Power of Awareness. With all your heart, you must want to be different from what you are. Intense, burning desire combined with intention to make good is the mainspring of action, the beginning of all successful ventures. In every great passion which achieves its objective, desire is concentrated and intentioned. You must first desire and then intend to succeed. Now the calling is for actualizing self, which could be through entrepreneurship like for me or any form of creative expression or life experience you desire. For me this appeared as a conversation with a friend who was teaching the speed reading workshops, which I actually helped him find as I mentioned to him about a year earlier that I was getting IT business deals from Craigslist as companies were posting there for IT gigs, and upon delivering the results, they would ask me for more services resulting in ongoing business. So I said, check there for gigs, and he found this one posted there. Now the calling disrupts one's false sense of comfort, or living in quiet desperation, to try something new, to restore fluidity of mind. So the calling is a desire from the heart, and we fulfill desire by committing to it. That is the deliberate intention living life consciously. Now, perhaps one may experience what is referred to as the refusal of the call. By the way, notice the similarities here with the seven stages of spiritual alchemy which we discussed recently, which may also be referred to as a guide to realize, understand, and actualize self. I'll link in the description to it. So here perhaps one is inspired to accept the quest, yet fears, uncertainty, and doubt-based beliefs result in resistance to accept the quest. If so, accept self, and by that I mean acknowledge that you are beyond beliefs of resistance, your true self is formless, true self-acceptance. Stillness is the power of now, as James Allen said. Past and future are dreams. Now is a reality. All things are now. All power, all possibility, all action is now. So for me, it was an opportunity to release identification to certain beliefs related to fears, uncertainty, and doubt by teaching private workshops in a hotel conference room to 50 or more people at a time, both Friday and Saturday, which I never did before. Having not given the opportunity to reveal these beliefs, they were revealed through this opportunity. So upon commitment, what was felt as resistance was understood to be an opportunity to transmute flow restrictors into flow enhancers through the release of identification to the beliefs that resulted in the fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So I took the initiative because, in this regard, I know that the cave I fear to enter held the treasure that I seek. See, when I started in full-time entrepreneurship in 2009, there were those who were also starting around that time. And over the years, I was able to see who succeeded in achieving their definite chief aims, and those who remained stuck, never going past this point, thus refusing the calling. The ones that were refusing the calling and suppressing it in inventive ways were persistently identifying with subconscious beliefs related to fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And by identifying with them, they would not allow themselves to seize the opportunities they wanted. And interestingly, I've also seen this resulting in waiting, trying to wait for opportunities, even though the opportunities were right there in front of them, and they knew it, yet they were denying it and suppressing their intuition rather than honoring it. Now to aid in this, we may have the meeting with the mentor. The mentor for me at that time was Paul, the founder of Iris Reading. He and I became great friends since, and we also did a discussion on speed reading a while back, which I'll link to in the description. In the meeting the mentor part, the mentor may offer some insights and perspectives, yet it is still up to the individual to apply what is learned. The mentor doesn't try to force, 
They simply bring awareness to what has been identified with in the subconscious mind through a revealing conversation from which you choose accordingly. Then we have crossing the threshold. Now, as we go through the hero's journey, remember that it is an individualized journey of life experiences. So thus, some of these may or may not be relatable. The point is that there are many ways of releasing identification to the subconscious beliefs that result in resistance. And I've met many people, thousands actually, who all have their own ways, which may be similar, different, or verbatim to what we discuss here. Whatever modality you use or develop and use while on the hero's journey will aid you through the process, and if you'd like, it will be what you teach to others from your personal experience. Like for example, the classic way, repeatedly proven throughout time, auto-suggestion, which I learned from Think and Grow Rich. Auto-suggestion was termed by Emile Coué, which according to him, repeating words enough times results in subconscious impression to be experienced accordingly. So auto-suggestion is a form of prayer then, as discussed in Sunday's video, which I'll link to in the description. Prayer is acknowledgement of already having what you desire, like thank you, Father, or something like that. Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, as in you already have it, and it'll be yours. Thus, prayer, like auto-suggestion, is acknowledgement of already having all that is needed in imagination, which allows you to remain in your ideal state of consciousness and manifest the unseen power accordingly to aid on your journey as applicable. Then it says the next part. One may experience what is referred to as tests, allies, enemies. Now we apply this from a metaphysical perspective. Consciousness is the only reality. Beliefs thus only play out as theater. So the cause is within, and how the cause is related to life experience is through beliefs. So if the beliefs are no longer identified with, let's say beliefs labeled as tests or enemies, so do experiences with others, environments, etc. change. For example, one of my earlier mentors, who I met prior to starting my 10-year corporate career before I got into entrepreneurship, mentioned to me that he started out in an entry-level position and eventually became CEO of the company that he worked for. During his last position, before he became CEO, he imagined one person that he worked with as an enemy, where that person would appear to stand in his way. Then one day, he reimagined him differently as a friend, and the person appeared as a friend. And that person actually went on to champion his promotion into CEO. And so he taught me that from his perspective, the greatest thing one can do in life is to turn an enemy into a friend. Textbook transmutation is what he was teaching me in his own way. And the wisdom to see people by their true nature of love proved itself in equation many times for me along the way. So in regards to my journey, it was helpful that I was aware of how I was imagining the audience of the workshops. And if it was not ideal, I would create ideal auto-suggestions and they would change accordingly. If by fear, uncertainty, and doubt-based beliefs, they would appear undesirably, I would note how I was imagining them and then I would create ideal imagining auto-suggestions for them during the week and they would change accordingly until they appeared ideally and the workshops no longer played out manifestations of fear uncertainty, and doubt, rather joy, certainty, and trust, your true nature, and thus auto-suggestions done in this way, acknowledge your true nature to reprogram your subconscious mind to allow the unseen power to take care of everything for you in an ideal way. Then we have the approach to the inmost cave. The inmost cave also represents fears, uncertainty, and doubts. So we see a pattern here. There's nothing resisting the way to actualizing yourself except beliefs in mind. So it is key then to talk to yourself in a helpful way to release identification to those beliefs if applicable. So if an undesirable circumstance occurs, one of the ways we can do this is by first not shaming or condemning self for fear, uncertainty, or doubt. Rather, comforting yourself like a good friend. Unconditional self-acceptance. Then ask yourself, if it is possible for the circumstances to transform, then ask, what would it look like if it were transformed and capture that feeling of it being true? Which also relates to the next part, the ordeal. So again, 
One is not alone in this regard. I've worked with many entrepreneurs and creative professionals over the years. They all have stories of what is referred to here as the supreme ordeal. I've had a number of them as well. And although the experiences were challenging, what helped was acknowledgement of what we will discuss in number 12, return with the elixir. See, when you learn something valuable to teach another, it could be for family, friends, or sharing it on the internet. Your personal experience is valuable and it helps them. And many who I've spoken with, who I mentioned this to, considered it as the number one reason why they were able to transform ordeals into opportunities. This is because we genuinely, by our true nature, desire to be in service to others. Then we have reward, number nine. So having transmuted the challenges, you experience the reward, whatever it is, physical prosperity and or spiritual prosperity. Then we have the road back. This is where one may still experience setbacks to learn from, which ends up being included in number 12. We see that for the hero's journey, a lot of times number 12 is where it all ideally relates to. Number 12 ends up being a big reason why that inspires us to release resistance to actualizing self. One appeared for me one time we ended up doing a workshop and only one person showed up. The workshop was on the surface looking like one that was going to be run at an expense. We used to do 50 to 100 at a time. And this time only one person showed up. Nevertheless, I did the workshop and I saw it as an opportunity to customize it for him. It became more of a private consult than a workshop and he enjoyed it deeply. Then it turns out he was a high-ranking executive at a large insurance and investment solutions provider and he ended up bringing us in on a wonderful private training deal that made up more than generously, financially speaking, for the one-person workshop. So we see that transmutation of obstacles into opportunities is one of the big lessons which the hero's journey teaches. Then we have the resurrection. This is considered the final aspect of the transformation. So now, you may have seen I've created five programs that were the result of everything I implemented to create three successful businesses. I'll link in the description to them. It was a big initiative. Many, many hours were invested over the course of the years to create these programs, which includes stories and everything I did and learned along the way with tools, workbooks, etc. A complete end-to-end -end resource for entrepreneurs based on personal experience and working with others. This is where I got to teach and practice everything I learned along the way since 2009, end to end, only this time in relation to number 12, the return with the elixir. And many have benefited from my programs, consulting from the programs, private events built on the foundation of the programs, and Zoom trainings I've done with businesses, and the journey continues sharing the magic elixir. Number 12 is thus where you get to share your magic elixir with the world to benefit the lives of others. So isn't it wonderful that this was all a result of entering into the cave I fear to enter? This is why I always say I value the journey and destination and enjoy them both as one. So we all have our version of this. Your life has meaning. And not only do you get to experience life, you also get to be, by example, a teacher for others. So consider discovering your own way, relating to the hero's journey, and sharing your own story with others. I've also helped a number of people create popular social media presences, books, blogs, consultants, or share what they learned with friends and family. And you could do the same if you'd like. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I am the star of the movie of life. I allow myself to be how I truly desire to be. This inspires others to also do the same. My definite major purpose is my highest priority from which all that is related appears ideally automatically by allowing the unseen power of my subconscious mind to take care of everything for me. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.